So we're going to look at two theories of why we sleep, the survival theory, but let's start with the restoration theory. And according to this theory, sleep enables the body and the mind to recover from the wear and tear of the day. Particularly early on in life, sleep is when our best growth and development takes place in terms of the different types of sleep. Non-REM sleep is primarily for physiological restoration, for instance, lactic acid removal. REM sleep is more for cognitive restoration, as indicated by the activity in the hippocampus, where we're strengthening the neural circuits that are vital for memory formation due to some of the events that we've been exposed to during our day. Evidence of the restoration theory, well, particularly during deep sleep stage four of non-REM, we get greater hormone secretion to enable repair due to wear and tear. We've all been there when you've been ill. We tend to sleep more, indicating the importance of sleep in helping us overcome that illness. A sleep lab, particularly an EMG, indicates reduced electrical activity of the muscles. An EEG would indicate, particularly, well, during non-REM sleep, reduced neural activity. Additional evidence, case studies of Endurance athletes, say ultramarathons, indicate not only do they have a higher volume of sleep, but particularly a higher proportion of deep sleep, stage three and four of non-REM, as opposed to a control group that has had just a normal day's activity. Newborns, developing fetuses, have significantly more proportionally REM sleep. So a newborn has roughly 50% of their 16 hours of sleep per day, as opposed to us middle-aged people as well as adolescents who spend about 20% of their eight to nine hours per night in REM. So the theory behind this is that newborn fetal development, this is the time of rapid neural development in the, say, proliferation of synaptic connections that are being formed as a result of exposure to the environment. And people have suffered from a head trauma um, typically will spend additional time in REM, indicating its importance for the basically repairing the brain, adaptive plasticity, you'll learn more about that in Unit 4. People who have been REM deprived have experienced cognitive decline, they're more irritable, um, impaired memory consolidation and retrieval, more about that when we do a separate clip on sleep deprivation, and they'll Consequently, when allowed to sleep normally, we'll experience REM rebound. And I'll go into this in, in a further clip. Following sleep de deprivation, not only will people sleep more, but they'll also have more non-REM sleep, indicating its importance for physiological restoration. Lim limitations of the restoration theory, well, quadriplegics, despite being physically inactive, their sleep patterns are similar to an able-bodied person. So again, this is a limitation of the theory and you need to know this. Likewise, even if we're basically um, being fairly lazy throughout the day, some of you students on holidays at the moment, if you are, you would still have a similar looking sleep patterns in terms of your, not only the volume of sleep, but also the nature of the sleep in terms of the stage three and four non-REM, which again is important for that physiological restoration. We can't notice much of a difference unless we do something excessive. Let's get to the survival theory of sleep. And this one, students find a little bit difficult. So think of it this way. If you're an animal, are you more vulnerable when you're asleep or more vulnerable when you're awake? Just think about that for a moment because it depends on the type of animals. If you're a large um, animal that has few predators, then you're not vulnerable when you're asleep. These animals, such as lions, tend to sleep quite significantly more than grazing animals because sleep enables them to conserve energy, which they can then utilize in basically looking for their next meal. Grazing animals, such as cows are most vulnerable when they're asleep. They sleep little according to the survival theory. They're far more adaptive to their environment and predators when they're awake, i.e. their senses are in tune. If they hear a sound, if they see movement in the bushes, 
then they can attempt to evade their predator as opposed to when they're asleep and they're not getting those cues from the environment. Smaller animals that are actually safer when they're asleep because they can burrow, they can hang off cave ceilings as in the case of certain bat species, they are more vulnerable when they're awake looking for food. They're less vulnerable when they're asleep hidden from their predators. These animals tend to sleep more. A limitation of this theory, particularly for humans, is that we sleep eight hours a day and we're most vulnerable to sleep, particularly when, let's say, we're in stages three and four of sleep, when we are physiologically not responsive to the environment. So we are most vulnerable when we're asleep. We don't live in holes or up trees, etc. And here's some statistics just to back up these arguments. So a giraffe only sleeps two hours a day. It's most vulnerable during this two hours, more likely to evade predators during the 22 hours it's awake. So again, a big animal that can't burrow or hide up a tree, they who has a lot of natural predators, they tend to sleep far less as opposed to the other end of the spectrum where we've got the possums, bats, etc. that sleep a lot because they're actually safest then. So I hope this has been 